What would you do if you poured out your heart to someone and was instantly rejected? Most times, an individual would feel embarrassed and or be regretful. But the man in this case took it a step further and actually ended the life of the woman he claimed to love. I'm gonna take a deep dive into the tragic murder of Anitra Gunn. And I will discuss the events leading up to her demise, as well as the lengths her killer went through in order to escape justice. Anitra Lachey Gunn was born on November 6, 1997. She was born to parents Christopher Gunn and Melissa Sharehouse. Her mom, Melissa, had tragically died in 2014 at the age of 35 in a car wreck. Anitra was a musically talented, vibrant young woman. She had graduated from Westlake High School in Atlanta and she had attended Fort Valley State University, but she would not be given the opportunity to graduate due to her sudden disappearance. You see, Anitra was last seen and heard on Valentine's Day 2020. Her dad had told news outlets that he had spoken with his daughter to wish her a happy Valentine's Day between 1 and 2 a.m. on February 14, 2020. At 8.11 a.m., she responded, Happy Valentine's Day. I love you too, Dad. And even added that she was going out of town with a new guy she had met. He questioned it, and he even sent her more texts. But she never responded again. That same day, he contacted the Fort Valley Police Department after Anitra's brother, Antoine, couldn't get into contact with her either. Police conducted a welfare check on her apartment, but she was nowhere to be found. While trying to get in touch with his daughter, Christopher reached out to Demarcus Little, who was Anitra's boyfriend at the time. He was an army sergeant at Fort Gordon. Demarcus apparently told her dad that he and Anitra went to a party, went to get food, then went to his house to spend the night, and that Anitra left his home in the morning to go to a job interview. DeMarcus even FaceTimed her dad while checking out a home on Camellia Boulevard because he claimed that Anitra's phone location was pinging there. Then on February 15, 2020, Christopher and other family members filed a missing persons report at Fort Valley. While in town, his son spotted Anitra's white Chevy Cruze. The car was missing its front bumper, and Anitra's purse was inside, but her keys were nowhere to be found. Two days later, her dad was back in Fort Valley to give DNA to the police to aid in her search. Earlier in the morning, he received a text for ransom. The text said that they had Anitra, and if he wanted to see her again, he needed to pay money. The ransom demand went on to ask for eight grand and instructed her dad to not contact the police. It was believed that at that time, however, Anitra was already dead. Christopher never responded to those messages, and her body was found the next day. On February 18, 2020, Peach County Sheriff's investigator discovered Anitra's body shortly before 3 p.m. in a wooded area along Greer Road in Southern Crawford County. It appeared that Anitra was strangled to death. As well, the missing bumper was discovered near her body, about 150 yards from the road. A day after their discovery, police arrested Anitra's boyfriend, Demarcus. But it wasn't in connection to her death. Apparently, he was charged with slashing her tires and breaking her apartment windows on February 5th. 
At the time of that incident, Anitra was asked by police if she knew of anyone that might have done it, and she stated no. And she also stated that she had not had any issues with anyone. DeMarcus was later charged with one count of malice murder in connection with Anitra's killing. Law enforcement had also questioned DeMarcus and Anitra's friend, Javon Abron, about her murder, and he allegedly made false statements to detectives on two occasions in the wake of Anitra's slaying and was charged. As well, he was also charged on one count of concealing a death. Two years later in March of 2022, DeMarcus Little's murder trial began in the Peach County Courthouse with Judge Connie L. Williford presiding, and DeMarcus's attorney, Benjamin Davis, argued that DeMarcus wasn't the kind of person who could commit murder. He said that, We believe that in time, what will be shown is that he's really not capable of committing this kind of offense. If he were the kind of person that would commit a malice murder like this, that would have been born out in the military. Prosecutor Neil A. Halverson, however, described an at times toxic relationship between DeMarcus and Anitra, a relationship filled with control, threats, manipulation, and possessiveness on DeMarcus's part. There was a focus on the timeline, most specifically, the hours leading up to Anitra's murder. The court allowed testimonies from a brother and sister who were friends with DeMarcus and Anitra. Tracy King and India King Head took the stand consecutively. India testified that she was the one who introduced Anitra to her boyfriend, DeMarcus. According to the siblings, at around 11 p.m. on the night before Valentine's Day, Tracy, DeMarcus, and Javon all went to a party together. DeMarcus had picked up his friends when they arrived at the party. Tracy's sister, India, was there with Anitra. Though Anitra didn't ride there with the group, she left with them, sitting in the back seat beside Tracy, and India corroborated that Anitra left with the men. According to Tracy's testimony, Javon drove DeMarcus's car to Anitra's house on Church Street in Fort Valley and dropped a couple off there. He couldn't recall the time though, but the night didn't end there for the couple. According to evidence presented by the prosecutor, the couple had went to a Waffle House in Byron at around 2 a.m. on Valentine's Day. They then left at around 2.30 a.m. to a home on Chestnut Hill Road where his aunt, Cherie Tolbert, lived. And according to the aunt, that was the last time she saw Anitra alive. According to evidence presented by the prosecutor, DeMarcus had poured his heart out to Anitra, and she spurned him, laughed in his face, and so he got so upset that he struck Anitra and choked her to death, strangled her with his bare hands. The aunt was questioned whether she heard any commotion during that time, and the aunt claimed that she didn't hear any commotion or struggle due to her being a heavy sleeper. Afterwards, he drove her car to the back of the home, put her body in the trunk, and drove to Greer Road in Crawford County, where her body was eventually found covered in tree limbs and debris. According to prosecutors, evidence to prove that he hid her body in the woods came from DeMarcus's phone, which was tracked to the same woods where Anitra's body was found. As well, there was evidence of DeMarcus's palm prints inside Anitra's car and on the trunk the day it was turned up. The prosecution also brought Javon onto the stand to testify against DeMarcus, and he revealed chilling moments before her death. He, he just thought he was like, man, you know, I was talking to me, bro. And I, I was pouring my heart out to him, bro. I was talking to him. He was like, um, I'm trying to tell how I feel about it and how, you know, how, how much I love her and stuff. And he was like, um, she ended up laughing in my face. And he was like, Brian, I don't know what happened. I just flat out. And I, and I 
get it, then he was like, when he was like, after that, like, he just grabbed me and started choking him. He was like, when, when, um, like, he was choking her at first, she was trying to fight back or whatever. But then he was like, at a point in time, she just stopped fighting. So he felt like she, she had wanted to be home with her. She wanted to go with her mom. Javon was also present when DeMarcus took him to the Pine Thicket in neighboring Crawford County where her body was dumped and that they both went there so that DeMarcus could retrieve the front bumper of Anitra's 2013 Chevy Cruze. The bumper had been banged off when DeMarcus drove it into the woods to dump her body. The prosecution also introduced Anitra's autopsy report. And according to the autopsy report, the 22-year-old died by manual strangulation from either hands or an arm around her neck. The medical examiner also found abrasions on her neck, a bruise on her forehead and upper lip, injuries on her right and left hip, and bleeding into the white parts of the eyes. He testified that the injuries to her face happened before she was killed and could be from being punched and agreed that bruising on the inside of her lip could have come from someone holding her hand over her mouth. The bleeding was a result of the choking. Anitra's face was also discolored, as it was several shades darker than the rest of her body. There was also crescent-shaped markings on the left side of her neck, and the medical examiner explained they could have been Anitra's own fingernails that made the marking. Sometimes if someone is being strangled, they will attempt to remove uh, the ligature or hands around the neck. Uh, so in some cases, you can get uh, fingernail imprints of actually deceased individuals' fingernail on their own neck. I can't say definitively that's what these are, but these do have that appearance. The ME was then cross-examined by the defense where they brought attention to Anitra's weight. She weighed 188 pounds at the time of her autopsy, whereas DeMarcus weighed 154 pounds, making her heavier than him. So they argued that since she was 30 pounds heavier than him, it was suggested that she could have been strangled by someone much heavier than her. As well, during the trial, a man named David Howard testified about his relationship with Anitra before her death. He testified that they began dating in early February 2020, after he met Anitra at a restaurant where she worked at, which was across the street from the barbershop where he worked. The two first started talking on Snapchat and then began texting. Things escalated where David spent the night with Anitra on February 4th, 2020. And around 5 or 6 a.m. on the morning of February 5th, 2020, he said he heard a loud boom, which woke them up. It turned out that a window near Anitra's back door was smashed and her tires were slashed. But it was proven that DeMarcus was the perpetrator, which demonstrated his violent and jealous nature. As well, a friend of Anitra, Sierra Stewart, testified that she felt that Anitra and DeMarcus weren't good for each other. She revealed times that she witnessed controlling or abusive behavior from DeMarcus, like when she was on FaceTime with Anitra and could hear DeMarcus outside of her home yelling, or the times he would call Anitra repeatedly if she wouldn't answer his calls. The prosecution had pulled up text messages, and weirdly enough, both David and Sierra received odd text messages the day that she died, possibly as a diversion as she was already dead. Text messages sent from her phone to David were asking where did he live and one even said that she wanted to break up with him. At some point, it was claimed that DeMarcus threw away Anitra's phone into a drainage pipe. DeMarcus had decided to take the stand in his own defense, hoping to convince the jurors he was not the killer. However, it only worsened his defense. 
Now, first I want to talk about yours and Anitra's relationship. That was your soulmate? Yeah, no. Now, to your soulmate, you slash your soulmate's tires. Is that correct? Yeah, no. You broke your soulmate's window. Yeah, no. All right. You threatened to shoot up a man that your soulmate was going out with. Yeah, no. You uh, told her that you were committing suicide and it was her fault, correct? Yeah, no. You saw the text message where she said that you were outside her house and you wouldn't leave. You did that on repeated occasions, correct? Yes, ma'am. You showed up at her house uninvited, correct? Yes, ma'am. She repeatedly told you, stop coming back, didn't she? Yes, ma'am. She told you that your relationship was toxic and that you couldn't be together, correct? Yes, ma'am. And every time you talked her back in to the two of you being together, didn't you? Then on Tuesday, March 15, 2020, the case was sent to the jury for a verdict. That evening, shortly after 8 p.m., the jury returned with a guilty verdict, convicting DeMarcus of felony murder. He was sentenced to life without parole by Judge Williford. Friends and family of Anitra experienced a bittersweet moment in regards to the sentence. There will be no more birthday parties, holiday celebrations, or family activities to share. That is all for now on this case. Please let me know your thoughts on it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you want. Your support is greatly appreciated. And I will see you next time on Melanin Mysteries.